Welcome back, folks, to Age of Lemuria. I'm your host and master of ceremony, Lord Lucan. Uh, check me out on my uh, uh, works down in the description below. Still working on that puppet. Uh, Uno! Uno! You're Hello. the only one here. Everybody else had family crises and everything else. Hunk Pop was supposed to be on later. Uh, mm -hmm. So, Uno, kudos to you. For being on time. <laughs> I did it. I, I wasn't even on time. I was like five well, minutes late. I was actually working on a map. So that actually worked out really, really well. Uh, so no complaints there. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, my name is Uno. I have a Twitter account. At underscore notice. I also have a YouTube account. Send me a link so I can put it down in the description. People can just click on it. Sure. Yeah. I have to, uh, I'll I'll go get it and then send it to you. Excellent. But uh, I put up some programming stuff because I am a games programming student. I want to see some of the work that you've produced. Um, it's 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 a bit sort of sketchy. Well, not sketchy. It's a bit <laughs> sort of sketchy. What are you? Oh my! Oh my! Uh, should no, should we not... be advertising this stuff? Oh, oh, oh. it's not sketchy. It's it's like very draft work. I just sort of throw up. It's rough. It's rough. Very rough work. There yeah. you go. Sketchy. It's just very sketchy work. <laughs> I work for a lot of crime syndicates. Yeah, and... I, was like, mm, I was like, yeah. A little bit of the uh, black coating market right here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's part of the dark web. <laughs> uh, Are we ready oh, to man, get? Great stuff. This is, this is, yeah, let's, let's do it. All right, all right. <laughs> this is going to be shrew pretending not to be a criminal. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> do some sketchy stuff. Uh, so the scene opens up, right? We have this desert, this vast wasteland. And in the middle of it, we see like this small little bastion of civilization. And in it, it goes down into like the sandstone cobble streets of uh, Ravenshaven. Where we see like different creatures running around. A uh, majority of it is humans, you know, humans hiding in them their faces and uh, very much a outpost of uh, criminal and villainy. Uh, and here we are. It goes all the way into like this window, right? And we see uh, Mudkip, a green dragonborn who is currently like getting undressed. What is uh, Shrew doing? Um, sleeping, I feel like. Probably has, like, a, a pillow over his head. Okay. Just snoring lightly. Uh, so, uh, uh, she's currently bathing herself. She's, like, wiping all the dust and stuff off of her. Uh, you are currently okay. asleep, so she doesn't bother you. And she just continues to, like, wipe her face off and, uh, get all the grime and dust from their recent travels off. Um, she like glances over at to the side and she like sees this like spell book, right? That she currently has on her and she like flips through it as she's like reading it. Um, uh, what do you do, Shrew, as you're just sleeping? <laughs> uh, Shrew will sort of, after a while of starting to wake up, realizing someone is interested in like, are you, are you done yet? Can I look now? Um, so she like turns and looks at you, right? Uh, and she's like, I'm fine. Okay. Alright, sit up. <laughs> Wait, uh, is she, is she still bathing? What? Uh, so she has like a, so water's really precious in the desert, right? So she's got like this little pan that she's like dipping a cloth in and wiping herself down, her, her green scales. Uh, she has a recent scar upon her face, uh, a token from when the plague had uh, struck her. Uh, her. Her arm is still injured, uh, so she, we're getting like a clear view, like a backside mm -hmm. image of her, of like all of her past injuries. Um, yeah, you see like she has had several adventures. Uh, a mark uh, like is on her side of where some sort of creature had gored her. Uh, wow, it looks like you've gone through quite the battles. 
Uh, she like glances back at you and like, uh, are you just like making small talk? She like rolls her eyes at you. Uh, I mean, are you in pain? Uh, she sa- she like flexes her like her her, her wrist of where Adric had healed her, and she's like, I could I could use some herbs. Uh, sure, I could prepare, like, some remedy. You probably need, like, a cast. No. Uh, so, like, it, all the major injuries are, are well, major, uh, were, was cured <laughs> with the, the wounds. However, uh, because of her, like, marks and her scarring, and of her arm, mm. right, uh, she still has, like, she's going to have, like, arthritis and stuff like that mm. when she gets older. Pretty confident that... Uh, when you get scarred, things happen, right? Um, I think arthritis is specifically to do with bones and joints. I'm not sure if that's related to scars, but it might be. I don't know. Well, I mean, when you break your arm... (laughs) I mean, it depends where you break your arm. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Uh, but yes, true is... Yes, you are. You are a doctor. (laughs) You literally (laughs) say that in your description. Shrew is a doctor. So I'm giving okay. you the anatomy of uh, the dragonborn, who's currently got okay. her back turned to you, and she is currently washing herself. So she says herbs. Herbs would be nice. Okay. Well, Drew will sort of go through his medical kit, and I assume he has some sort of sedative or painkillers? Uh, or... Make a uh, med- medicine check. Oh, man, I'll do that. There you go. I- I've got medicine. I've got medicine for days. Let's see this medicine roll. So we're reestablishing your character as a doctor and physician. See if he's any good at it. Well, <laughs> it's decent. Okay. Uh, tell me what you do. To, what What are these herbs you get out to uh, soothe the uh, pain? Will they? I, I imagine. Shrew will offer something like a balm and be like, it, uh, it might sting a bit. It's uh, got disinfectant in it. Okay. Uh, she offers you her arm. Okay, I'll apply the <laughs> ointment. That's fine. I mean, it's a medicine shake, right? It means you're uh, physically working on her, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, she says, thank you very much. Okay. No problem. Uh, I was thinking today we should probably talk to... Well, I should talk to... I'm not sure what your plan is. But I'm going to talk to these... You know, the mercenaries. You're going to go talk to the orcs. (sighs) She, like, takes a deep breath and lets it out. She's like, what do you see in those filthy creatures? Um, You know what I do see? I see a lot of undead creatures coming across where we just came. Uh, Someone's got to deal with them. So, like, she winces in pain, and, like, she starts, like, redressing herself and putting on her robes. Mm. I mean, you know. Wait, does... Do dragonborns have, like, nudity? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure what the dragon... Her? Should I be looking away right now? Tell me what you're doing. Are you making this awkward? Am I? <laughs> you're a doctor, I'm... Jim. Damn it, you're a doctor. You've seen naked people all the time. So, <laughs> what, what, what's... what do you think happens in a hospital, man? You think everybody's dressed? <laughs> they wear the little, like, aprons. Well, I'm sorry, man. This isn't meta- modern medicine. No, no. People are, are naked. Yes, people are naked when you examine them. Yes. Okay. You're a doctor, damn it. <laughs> so, Act like a doctor. <laughs> I don't know what dragonborn culture is like. They might uh, not roll have... me a medicine check. You see if you've seen the anatomy of a dragonborn before. All right. That's... They might be like alligators. It might all be internal. Okay, yeah. So tell me about this study. Like you've you've gone into great depths, right? This is above a twenty. Well, I imagine shoes travel very far away and sort of 
seen other Dragonborn before. I have to ask. Possibly. I have to ask for the people on the internet. Is this a fetish for your character? Uh, this is above a 20. This is almost a crit. <laughs> is Naked Dragonborn a specialty of your character? Sure, let's go for it. He's okay. studied Naked Dragonborn. Uh, so is he making this weird? Uh, I'm going to say no. Okay, so I he is being professional. Work. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Kids might be watching this show. I mean, it's the internet. It is the internet. <laughs> hey, hey, kids. Have you been on the internet for more than five minutes? <laughs> Guess what's on the internet? <laughs> so tell me about the study, right? Tell me about Shrew's study, <laughs> extensive study of Dragonborn's anatomy. Oh, God. I instantly regret making this role. Uh, I'm trying to figure out your character. Sure. Let's say during his younger years, he had a crush on a younger dragonborn. Sure. Sure. Uh, probably while he was out traveling the slaver's route. What happened to this uh, dragonborn? Um... I mean, it's it's never really a, a good happy ending in the slavers route. I mean, it could be. I, I feel like they probably have to be got, all bad. Maybe they got separated out on the road after like a bandit attack or something. Okay. Bandits attacking bandits. It's a lawless world. It's possible. It's very possible. A no company could have fallen upon them. Anything. So you guys were separated, and you always had this soft spot in your heart for Dragonborn? Uh, sure. I, I just uh, think he understands Dragonborn anatomy very well with that role. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> okay. So uh, what are you planning to do besides bathe? She says, well, I, mean, I was planning on resting here. I understand that uh, you want to go talk to those filthy orcs and the... And, uh, what's your goal with them? What are, you, what are you hoping to achieve? Um... I mean, think of it like this, you know. If those undead sort of continue rampaging around, people could get hurt. I'm just paying it forward, you know. So you want the enemies of the Inquisition to fight the undead? How can I help you in this? Um, I mean... If... I don't know what my sort of challenges will be at the moment, because I haven't really started yet. I just know, like, their name. Uh, you do notice, like, she, ha she like... As she's putting and getting dressed, she puts on like this necklace of like a, a symbol of the Holy Master. Mm. You think that she is somewhat or semi devout. She's not like a a, a hardcore <laughs> like fanatic, fatalist. right? Right. Yeah. Uh, but she's she definitely has she believes in the faith. You're a very interesting character, I think, if you don't mind me saying. Because you are devout, but you aren't human. That must be c conflicting. She, like, rubs her, like, symbol. I mean, didn't you grow up among other Dragonborn? She said sadly no. Oh, okay, so you were an orphan. I don't know. You don't remember your childhood. My family is the Inquisition. Okay. Let's go with that. Uh, I assume something happened before the Inquisition. I will not pry. She says, uh, I know that you weren't at the fort, but I served the canoness, uh, Vera Cressrage. Okay, I've not heard of this person. Uh, roll me a knowledge history. Or have I? With my plus zero history. 
Yeah, you've heard this person. Oh, uh, yeah. Canonus is an important person in the rank and file of the Inquisition. Oh. Think of it as a uh, secondary to a Inquisitor. Uh, so you have these uh, ranks and file, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, let's see here. If the Holy Master is <clears throat> God of itself, right? Yeah, uh, if Holy Master is God, right. this is where we are on the scale. Uh, right. Pretty much. Um, I mean, you're not far. Like People worship him as a god. Uh, they believe in him, right? And this is like a symbol of faith in which she's like rubbing this uh, token of the symbol of the Holy Master. And she says, um, the canoness, uh took me in and uh, she uh, fed me, clothed me, took care of me. She found me very interesting and uh, I was a delight to talk to. Although I could never rise, rise to her uh, level of uh, within the Inquisition, I knew that if I served her, she would reward me. And I unfortunately abandoned her in her most time, desperate hour of need oh, I see that must have been very heartbreaking for you do you think she's still uh, alive at least I pray that to the holy master that she is I see okay you think that there's some regret in her voice right like all this time like she's been like fighting for a belief and then like she uh she got knocked unconscious, right? She got injured, and she had to flee the battlefield. Uh, she kind of thinks, well, you can roll an insight. I'll roll insight. Yeah. I'm a doctor, Jim. I know people. You, you might have some empathy, right? Uh, yeah, Absolutely. you're pretty sure that she's like giving survivor's guilt, right? I mean, <laughs> I've met a lot of people in your sort of position. Uh... My advice is you can't make those decisions again. You can only make the decision of what you want to do now. She like looks up at you and she kind of like nods in agreement. She's like, maybe you're right. But I don't know what to do now. I abandoned my post and my Kenaness. What can I do now? What what can I believe in? She like continues to rub her token, uh, kind of like a worry stone. She just continues to mm. like rub it. Have you thought about going back to the city of Alkaline? She says. I mean, it's a long journey back, but if I do, if I return to the city of Alkaline, and the canonist is still alive, I'd be hung. Oh, for like abandoning duty. Greatest or... of duties. The gravest of sins. I took an oath to protect humanity, and when my oath was called upon, I ran away. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's, that must be a lot of pressure, I guess. But the, you can still serve the Holy Master through your actions, like uh, teaching people uh, just preaching the good word, all that good stuff. Roll me a persuasion as she's like really hard on herself, right? And you're trying to like, like there's other things, right? There's other things that there's more to life than the holy master. So she God like just it. shakes her head and she's like, you know what? Thank you for attempting to cheer me up, but you think that like your words didn't have any impact on her? Okay, we'll make sure to eat some good breakfast, eh? She like continues very rubbing her arm of like where doctor's it, orders. Oh, <laughs> you're giving it doctor's <laughs> orders. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, uh, bed rest and food. You say? Hmm. Yeah, you need the rest. You look like you need it. Okay. And you know, we'll we'll look into it. We'll see what the holy master has in plan for both of us. See. She says maybe. Here in the city of exiles, I don't know. Well, I feel like this is you... the furthest place from from the Holy Master. I mean, that just means it's the place that needs the Holy Master the most, don't you think? Uh, I'm convinced by your words, right? Prior to, she just shakes her head. She just seems. I mean, like, what do I know? Yeah, I'm just an old guy. Well, are you old? I don't think you're old. 
He's like 60. Is he? Yeah, he's supposed to be old. Oh, does he? he? Does he not sound old? No, he doesn't sound old. I thought he was like a young doctor type. Ah, this this guy's got like children. You never described oh. him as old. I think I described him with a beard and a mustache, but he's sort of okay, right. wizened and well traveled. All right, all right. That's okay. interesting. That's a different pro- uh, aspect of which I've seen or thought of him. So interesting. Well, it's a contrast to Adrian, I think. A vast contrast, yes. Very much so. All right, I'm going to go downstairs if that's okay. Excellent. Uh, so I anyone... assume you leave the key in with Mudskip? Uh, I mean, is there only one key between us? Of course. You're sharing okay, a room. Then I'll leave, <laughs> leave the key behind. Because okay. I sort of know she'll be there for most of the day. Excellent. Uh, once again, you stumble upon what seems to be a heretical meeting of an ex inquisitor, a uh, boar elf, a elf, a knoll. So the human inquisitor is bald. Uh, he is uh, making declarations of. Let's we'll see what the topic is today. <laughs> cleaning the streets. Interesting. Cleaning the streets. Street cleaning. Uh, so it seems street to be cleaning, it seems to be a problem with the streets. People are throwing their shit out in the streets, and there needs to be cleaning. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I don't know. It's a city, so what do you expect? Um, yeah, people are throwing garbage out into the city, and this the the conversation of today is like, uh, do we need to have a garbage disposal area? Do we need a trash area or something like that? A dump. Do we need a city dump? Um, yeah. Why don't people have lives and are living it? So that is the current topic that they're discussing. Uh, Judas has brought this up and he says, uh, uh, this man who's a, a bald inquisitor. Uh, and I mean, like... <laughs> commanding voice is like, we need to clean our streets of filth. Um, but it's Why don't not you the... just... <laughs> Why don't you just have the dragon eat the trash? Do you say that? Dra- yeah, I mean, are you interrupting this this conversation that's currently happening? Mind you, this is a chamber meeting, right? I mean, it's not sealed off in a room or anything. No. It's just this is a out, public forum, you know? right? But just to be clear, you're interrupting the uh, inquisitor as he's making these proposals. I'd, I'll probably wait for the inquisitor to finish speaking before interrupting. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Just, just, just to be clear. It's like, hey, I'm inserting myself into the scene. <laughs> I like the scene. I want to be in the drama. Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, a boar elf stands up. And he's like, <laughs> uh, he's like, well, you know, out in the out, we got uh, the endless desert. Just, just toss our crap out in the endless desert. Nobody cares. There's all this space around us. Why don't we just do that and just make it a city ordinance? And then Bar like kind of nods in agreement and. So Sakul is like this pot-bellied, humanoid-looking pig. Uh, he's short, only about like let's see here, about four foot five. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's pretty short, and stocky. And on him, on his shoulder, is this giant pet toad. It's like croaking, and it's like eyes are kind of like blub blub. Um, <laughs> you, you've seen this creature before. It is a cane toad, uh, very large. Are they animals. used a lot in medicine? So what? Are cane toads relevant to medicine? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Can I make a medicine check? Sure. <laughs> I want to know what they do. Uh, so you're pretty sure that uh, you're not certain, but cane toads have some poison that may be of use. Ah, poisonous toad. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, like, uh, what type of usage it would be, because you didn't roll high enough. But you're pretty certain that that cane toad produces some sort of poison. But of that poison, you're not quite sure what effect. You could roll a knowledge nature if you wanted to go over and test the toad. I was like, That's okay. Okay. <laughs> From across <laughs> the table of a meeting hall is this knoll who's, like, gray-headed, and he looks fairly old, right? Mm. Not quite certain how old this knoll is, but he is very old. He's got brown hair and silver hair, and he's got a spear, and he's got leather armor. 
Uh, compared to the boar elf, he's very lean and athletic, uh, but he's old and wiry, right? Uh, you think that is because of his native strength. And then off to the side, you see a uh, elf who's kind of got her feet up on the table, not really giving two craps about anything. Uh, she has this uh, dark hair, and she like glances over at the new person. She nods to you, and she's like kind of watching the audience more than she's paying attention to the council's uh, edicts and declarations. <laughs> okay. What do you do? Oh, and of course, sleeping uh, at the head of the table is a massive dragon. Uh, I mean, how could we forget dragon. the dragon? Yep. It's a big-ass dragon. It is currently silver, and roll me a perception as you're watching this dragon sleep. Sure, I got good perception. <laughs> nope. That is a big ass dragon. So yeah, just feed the trash to a dragon. Is they that got, true? Okay. They got like full stomachs or whatever. Roll me a uh, uh, persuasion as you're like making this declaration of feed the garbage to the dragon. I mean, think about it. Dragons have like acid in their stomach, right? Uh, that's true, right? So like everybody like looks at you and is like, can we? And they like turn and look at Valseth, right? Who's like just sleeping there. And the dragon gets no reply, right? He just continues to sleep and they're like, is that an option? And they start considering this option of feeding garbage to the dragon. <clears throat> all right, I'm, I'm Shrew, by the way. Nice to meet you all. Uh, they nod to you and say, that's a wise proposal that you suggest. <laughs> uh, I've just... I've never seen a dragon in person before. Like few have. But you guys apparently live with one. That's what I'm assuming. Yes, indeed we do. It's like your pet, or? Oh, they laugh at this. So they're like, no, no. Uh, Valseth is a dragon very much of his own making. I mean, most dragons are made by themselves, I think. Ooh, just laid in eggs. <laughs> so, so you're uh, an outlander or outsider. Where, who are you, a shrew? And you seem to have some political tongue. Uh, <laughs> I'm just a traveling surgeon. Just uh, offering help where I can get the coin. Like, well... Stick around. There should be plenty of conflict and injured bodies. I mean, not too long ago we were discussing what to do with the um, fort, Fort Malgrave, that is currently being constructed in the uh, Golden Plains. Oh, is that the one I just ran away from? <laughs> I think it is. Yes, the Inquisition are pushing their luck. They're trying to expand their influence. I don't think you'll have to worry about this fault anymore. Uh, I... They, like, turn and look at you like... What are you talking about, stranger? Well, I just come from that direction, I think. Uh, and last I checked, it was all sort of uh, burning to the ground. <laughs> What's burning to the ground? The fort is? I mean, there was... Well, I'm not sure if the fort... It was just everything was sort of... Did, I'm not sure if you've heard of, like, the recent plague thing? Recent? There's the, the plague of undead. Oh, uh, they kind of, like, turn and look at each other, like, what are you talking about? They're very confused. They're like, you're saying that the plague has returned? Uh, well, I... Don't really know much about the history behind the plague. Roll me I just knowledge know history. The, <laughs> I just roll me knowledge history. It's like you might not know. Yeah, well, you, you've heard of the plague, right? You're you're aware of like these I'm major disasters. Yeah, uh, you've never heard of it or seen of it, but uh, you're pretty confident that there have been many plagues through the history of Lemuria. Yes. However, like the dates and times and how many there have been, kind of elude you. You think that this is. You've heard of like it being cyclical, like sometimes like the plague would come out and it wouldn't be a big thing, and then it would 
retreat back into the black marshes and then come out and make a big show and then something happened and you know you got a feg vague recollection of its history yeah so i was just traveling through the golden plains and uh then i ended up at this fort and it was under attack by zombies there's like a low whispering right this is a public area public arena they're like what's this like the plague is returned and you hear like this whispering going among them you can do an insight to see like what's happening as like people are starting to get a little upset oh, I start a, a uh, public scandal yeah. zombies coming man uh so you hear like uh, a concern like is this the return of the plague uh you, everybody seems really worried and concerned they're like wait what could possibly burn down the fort it's like no nah, it's just it could be just rumors and lies uh they, they seem unconvinced perhaps there's a way you could persuade them um as their doubting words as this newcomer just shows up and says hey hey fort's on fire uh the plague has returned if you don't believe me, perhaps you can consult my ca traveling companions while you are not, not obviously occupied with uh, the removal of trash from your streets. Okay. Have a very good day. <laughs> Is that how you're going to leave it? <laughs> I mean, you these walk guys in. Hey, guys, plague's around. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> if you need a doctor. Get in touch. If you need a doctor, get in touch. So you've informed them that the plague may have occurred. Interesting. <laughs> uh, they, there's doubts. And they're like, Bars starts suggesting, like, we should send out scouts. And, like, we need to confirm this information. Like, who are we going to send? And, like, they're there to, like, look for people to confirm. Your not my doctor. problem. I am yeah, just a doctor. Your You're just a doctor. You've done your duty. Uh, as you come down here, you notice these shady characters sitting in a corner. You see three dark elves. Uh, one of the dark elves is currently petting this dire wolf. Uh, as they're like discussing current situations and what's happening. Uh, they take notice of you immediately as you come down the stairs and they nod to you. Okay. Can I make like a, a nod in Thieves' Cat back? You can, yes. So you start flipping your hands, right? You start, uh, these can't is all hand sign language, right? Well, it's just a, a, a vague gesture that sort of conveys a hidden meaning. What do you say in these can't? Uh, greetings. Uh, they like turn to look at you and say, greetings, fellow rogue. <laughs> uh, Can we talk business? <laughs> of course. They like nod, like speak. Okay. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you all. My name is Shrew. I am a, a doctor. Uh, I'm currently looking for work. So, what can you do? <laughs> uh, surgery? Uh, they like turn and look at each other and they're like, like they like shake their heads no and like currently we don't need a doctor okay well if you are if you need something no questions asked they nod and reply uh, just call the shrew they nod and reply and then they'll say we'll keep you uh, keep you in mind shrew uh, shrew will nod and make his way to get some breakfast excellent uh a barkeep uh, a wench uh is currently attending the uh nobles comes over and to you and says what can i do for you lad um well what would you recommend what's on the menu today she says so well we always have our freshly tapped honey ale we also have a mug of uh mug of uh beer uh, we also have some fine wines, if you are interested. Uh, also, we have the Brewer's Supply. What's on house tap? Uh, I'll take the Brewer's Supply, please. 
Uh, so she comes over and she gets like this uh, dark uh, ale and she brings it over to you. Uh, she says, that'll be one silver. One silver? <laughs> okay, sure, I'll give you one silver. Is that like the normal cost for ale or is that high? It's high. What's what's with the? I mean, I I guess this is is this the tourist rate? I mean, she like looks at you and she's like, "Do I look like a tourist?" <laughs> yeah, she's never seen you before. <laughs> of course, you're a tourist. Uh, I think she will sort of lean in and be like, "Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not made of money. Maybe we can." Uh, tell me what you're doing to convince her. So you're trying to persuade her that you're one of the locals, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, didn't you hear about that? You know, the plagues are turning. <laughs> okay. So... I, I've obviously had a very traumatic last few days. I would very much appreciate... Uh, I'm a very card. strapped to cash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an sure. old man and I've fallen oh, over. Man. I had an I'm accident. I'm a doctor. By the way, I'm a doctor. Hi. If you need a doctor, let me know because that's yeah, my thing. Roll it. Roll that sweet, sweet persuasion. This. I was treating this woman the other day. She had a broken arm, and she said, "If, if you, if I only had the right sort of balm." <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent. She's like, oh, you're a doctor? Oh, uh, we can provide services for you for free if as long as you're always on tap for us, doctor. Really? Oh, that would be so kind of you. Yeah, people, adventurers come in all the time, injured and are hurt. And it'd be good to have a physician on staff. Also, can you weigh tables? Can I weigh tables? Is that a doctor thing? Uh, she's asking you pretty much... Uh, She's she's trying to hire you. Uh, she wants you to be part of the inn. You're literally an in-house doctor. Does mm, that make sense? I mean, I'm sort of on the road a lot lately. I mean, I can do work while I'm here, but I'm not sure how long I'll be staying. Uh, we could give you free room and board. Uh, she like starts offering you like several incentives for you to stay. Uh, 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 well. She turns and looks at the bar witch Sarah, uh, who like comes over and says, uh, "Before you get too ahead of yourself, Aura, do you have some sort of credibility, some form of identification?" <laughs> yes, here's my guild membership. Uh, she takes it and she's like, "Interesting. It's good to see that uh, the people of Alkaline, the guilds of Alkaline, have not forgotten us out here." She returns your card and she says, yeah, free food and drink for you while you're here, doctor. Thank you very much. It's very generous. And, uh, yeah, if is, is there anyone in sort of need of medical treatment while I'm here? Roll me a percentage die. High yes, low no. <laughs> 100 people need medicine right now. I mean, you never know. It might be, uh... So, um, they're like... Uh, they like start like describing it's like the common cold and stuff like that that are currently affecting these people it's because of the rains in uh, the Golden Plains. People are coming from the Golden Plains to get out from the the the, the rains, and they're coming with disease and stuff like that. And like, do you have anything that we could uh, have like a home drink or something like mm -hmm. that, something to ease like the sinuses? And they're like, do you have some sort of concoction that could? Ladies, let me tell you about this soup, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it, oh my gosh. Okay. It just clears all of the blocked passages. Uh, very steamy. <laughs> you can prepare it with lots of cheap meats. Don't tell the customers that. Uh, so make, make a medicine check, right? Make a medicine check. Sure. As you're describing I, this, like, as you're trying to relay, like, this ingredients, right? It's like, let me tell you about the sweet, sweet meal. 
I mean, it's like something they could set up that helps people. I just okay. You're you're conveying right, and she like looks at you and she's just like chicken noodle soup. <laughs> chicken noodles are really good for colds. <laughs> It's true, right? It keeps you hydrated, right? And flushes out the sinuses and stuff like that. She's like, oh, that's a great idea. I didn't think about that. And she's going to write that down on her. Uh, <laughs> uh, how much do you think we should charge, Doctor? Oh, uh, how much is chicken soup worth? I don't know. <laughs> you tell how me. much is a chicken worth? Uh, well, tourist rate or local rate you know uh she winks at you she's like you know how this works <laughs> i mean well, you're part of the guild right upselling is always important right i mean you can sell these as you know special noodles special uh doctor approved chicken noodle soup <laughs> doctor sure. approved <laughs> chicken noodle soup I'm, I'm starting my own soup business now. This I mean, is... she's offering you a cut of the slice now. How much? Ah, how much do you want? Um, well, I, I think for this miracle cure, Doctor Shrews like... approved chicken noodle soup. Uh, how how does sort of five copper sound? She nods agreement. Up. Five copper. Unfortunately, it doesn't do what you say, uh, advertise it, right? Your medicine <laughs> check doesn't special grant any It's the placebo effect. Well, it's the placebo, right? Um, yeah. Five copper. <laughs> How much is normal soup worth? I don't know. I will write that down. Interesting. Is it like one copper? I don't know. Uh, so had you have succeeded, uh, this would have cured one Z's. Had you have succeeded? One Z's? Oh, right, okay. One like a disease, one. right. So this chicken noodle soup, right, would have been like a, a cure for uh, future future players. Mm, but now it's just a scam. Uh, I mean, is it? It's soup, right? It's. I mean, soup is good. And That's it's true. really cheap soup, so... It's just part of my character arc now. I make yeah. soup. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Shrews approved chicken noodle soup. I like it. Yeah, it's awesome. good. Uh, yeah. Uh, this starts going up on the chalkboard. And she's writing <laughs> out this new and improved chicken noodle soup. Um, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so after finishing his drink, can I check in on these people over here? Uh, Hello, I'm a doctor. <laughs> Excellent. It, 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 go ahead and place yourself as like uh, Aura and the barkeep Sarah are like getting together and like no 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 we need to add more seasoning and flavoring they're like no less seasoning and flavor we need more water and they're like <laughs> discussing the ingredients right? uh, as you approach these um, noblemen of fine regalia and of great standing uh, stares at you and says, Hello, good sir, I am Sir Stuart, and this is my lovely wife, the Duchess Ariel. Say hello, Ariel. Hello. Uh, Ariel and I are here on, on a special holiday, you see. Special holiday. What are you doing here, good sir? My name is Shrew. I am a traveling, uh, surgeon. Oh my, you are a traveling man of some prestige. Uh, do you have your identification card with you? <laughs> yes, I work, I've, I'm guild approved. Excellent. Let me see it. So uh, he takes it and like takes out this monocle and like looks at the guild approved thing. He says, oh, it's legit. Oh, look, honey, it's, it's a legitimate guild member. Oh my, look, honey, look. And Ariel's like, oh, yes, honey, he is. He does seem to be what he says he is. I can't tell you how many fake doctors there are. Everybody's trying to sell us something or someone here. Absolutely all impossible. Those, all of those con artists, you know, how kind outrageous. of... I know, and the prices they charge. Did I tell you the story of a man who sold me a talking manticore head? It was ridiculous, I tell you. <laughs> ridiculous. It didn't talk at all. Well, 
I mean, <laughs> what did you do with the head? Oh, oh, you see those strange fellows over there? He gestures to the dark elves. They took it off our hands. Apparently, apparently monster parts are in all high fashion and desire. They sold it, as I understand, after giving me a hefty price for it. I only got half back what I bought it for, though. Still a rip-off. Eh. <laughs> Curious. I mean, do you get manticles around here a lot, huh? There are. We've gone hunting several times, but we've come across several disgusting weapons in the area. I hope you don't come across those <laughs> foul beasties. Oh, I'm not much of a fighter myself. Oh, I women's, much prefer. Wivens are disgusting, foul, loathsome creatures. They have they have necks that look like scrotum socks. Isn't that right, dear? She's like, yes, honey. Very disgusting creatures. They stink too. He's like, yes. No good comes from associating with those types. Okay. Well, I will certainly keep an eye out for these. Wyverns. Oh, yes. Please do. Hey, hey, good sir. Good sir, while you are out and about, there is a statue that someone told us about. We never got to go and see it. Ah, okay. So keep an eye out for the statue of the Holy Master. I heard that it was some form of relic of ancient Octopus. It seems to be of great importance, but we never found it. And the man who told us, he seemed to just dismiss us casually. As if we could be dismissed, right, darling? Oh, yes, honey, yes, of course. Well, you know this town. I imagine you must get a lot of... Uh unusual characters coming through oh good sir have i told you that we met the the, the master slayer the, the, the slave master slayer adron he's a modern man now i didn't know that he was such a dastardly devil oh dear who is and then this... my wife's like who is this slave killer oh you mean the, ma the man who killed the slave master more Oh, I see. Oh, his name More. was Adrian. He's a criminal. I didn't know he was so so vile and disgusting. Have you seen the wanted posters of him? So he, like, gets out, like, this, like, booklet of, like, wanted things. Like, you see, like, wanted animals, like this and that. And, like, all types of, like, fur trade, animal trade, people trade. And he, like, pulls <laughs> out this uh, yeah, uh, wanted poster of Adrian. If you go to your uh, player's handouts. Yeah, I remember the, the wanted poster. He says, yes, I met the devil. The devil himself. Oh, dear. Uh, have they managed to catch him yet? Oh, no, he's free. Oh, he's a terrible, terrible fiend. Well, what was he like when you met him? Oh, he, he, was, he was ever a bit of a scam artist. <laughs> oh, I must have. Uh, well, uh, at least you didn't get lost out in the desert. Eh? That sounds. Oh, that is true. Who knows what he could have done to my poor darling wife out in the desert? She like. <laughs> she like waves herself with her fan. Uh, by the way, they are in hefty clothes, right? They're in heavy clothes. But you think that she's getting flustered, not because of what uh, what uh, okay. is talking about, right? Yes, the like foul the beast could have ravaged me out in the desert. It would have been horrible. She's like, absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Uh... Yep, okay. This is fun <laughs> conversation. Uh... I will make sure to keep an eye out for this wanted criminal. Of course. Of course, do you see the bounty on his head? That could buy you an estate, good sir. A wanted man of great power. An estate, but no you doubt. Say. <laughs> yes. You see the gold on his head. Hmm. Maybe I would like my own estate. He says, it would make you very rich or very dead. It would be... Uh... <laughs> I mean... No one's killed me so far. Who would hurt a doctor? That is true. Oh, you're a doctor, that's right. 
friend. Yes, I'm a doctor. I, of I'm course, doctor. I'm sorry I got all flustered. That fiend, thinking of that foul monster that's on the loose. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Uh, so, I guess I'll see you around town. Of course. If, you, uh, if anything would happen to your darling wife, uh, please let me know straight away so I can uh, apply medicine. <laughs> Interesting. Bit, a Romeo a persuasion or a deception. What are you trying to do here? Are you trying I to hit just, towards the wife, or what are I, you trying to do here? I wasn't trying to, but it, it sounded it like sounded that. It sounded a lot like it. I was like, wait, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> oh, God, oh, I was like, oh, that would have been so good. Phew, close safe. Would have been that would have been hilarious. <laughs> That's persuasion. Okay. All right. She says, well, if I, I do say so, I, uh, I am as healthy as a horse. And uh, the wife's like, oh, well, yes. I no, do it's... get the vapors every so often. I might come see you, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Milady. Of course. Okay. Of course. Uh, I'll be around then. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to go outside. So Sir, Sir Stuart doesn't take any notice of his wife uh, watching you leave. It's like she's watching you. But, um, yeah. Sexy doctor. Oh, sexy <laughs> doctor. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Very um, <laughs> you come out into the uh, market of Ravenshaven. And in the center of it is this massive orb. Uh, which you saw once again when you le when you came in, and that is, uh, as you recall, uh, the physical manifestation of the white flame. And here it lingers above the pool of water. As to the a... side, you see the stable master William, who currently has orcs working for him, uh, who are currently shoveling shit and and uh, sewing horses and brushing horses and oiling saddles. And then in the corner, you once again see uh, Amok, uh, who is currently training with the orcs, since it is in the morning. Um, I will not interrupt, but I will watch the orcs training for a bit. Yes. That's okay? Yes. Do you speak orcish? I do not. Okay. Uh, their language is harsh to your ears, especially as a human. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what Amok sees you. Uh, perception plus one. No, he's got bonuses. Plus three. There we go. It's proficient. Baboosh. Yeah. So as he, as he's training, right, he says something to the second largest orc, who like nods in agreement, and he comes up and rides up next to you, and he says. Shrew, you didn't make our appointment last night. I thought something had happened to you. Uh, did I forget an appointment? Uh, I'm very sorry. Traveling across the desert took a lot out of me. Uh, and I'm not sure if I mentioned last time I was here, but we were fleeing for our lives when we were escaped the Golden Plains. I'm not sure if you've heard the rumors. I have not. What's going on? Uh, are you familiar with the history of the plague? Um, let's see if he's got any history. I do not believe so, but we will see nonetheless. I think it's just a straight one. Yep, it's a straight one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So, where I was, there was a undead attack, a siege upon a fort. Uh, could potentially be a lot of money for your band of. Where? Uh, south of here. I can In show you if you have a map. Golden Plains. Yeah, Golden Plains. No, you're talking about the undead in the desert. There's undead under in the, the desert. Sands. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. There's undead under the sands? 
like looks at you. He's like, of course. When did that happen? They've always been there, ever since the fall of the mixed kingdoms. Every so often we find a tomb that's been uncovered. Okay. We're about ready to march out if you want to join us. Um, I mean, that depends how much you're willing to pay me. He says, whatever you can carry. Mm, this is tempting, because I can carry a lot. I'm not sure if you... Yeah, can you? You're a rogue, I can't right? Carry. I Why don't can you carry? <laughs> it's, it's not that much. But... He says, yeah, well, there's a tomb that has recently been uncovered uh, by one of my orc scouts. Hey, I mean, if there's a tomb, let's, let's check out the tomb. You... <laughs> as long as I get the cuts, you know. Uh, what you can carry. Okay. <laughs> He says, it was dangerous, Doctor, but that's why we're bringing you to patch up any of my wounded, injured boys. I will have to talk to my traveling companions to see if they are interested in this venture, but I'm sure they, the prospect of exploration would be very interesting to them. He shrugs and he says, anything else, Doctor? We'll be leaving tonight. Could you tell me more about this temple that you've uncovered? It's a tomb. There. This, do you know who it's a tomb to? Uh, what does, are there it's any a like straight up roll? It says nope, it's a tomb. It's a tomb. <laughs> okay. Uh, it says my know? orc boys gave me a little less, a little less information, but yes, out in the desert there is a tomb of which of whom properties I have no idea. Okay. Well, sounds like fun. Since have you explored many tombs? I've explored once or two, once or twice, yeah. Usually it comes up empty, but every so often you'll come across something of interest. Mm, get that big fish. That's that's the way to do it. It's risky. It's risky. There's traps and all types of undead creatures. Uh, if you'd like, I can perform a medical examination of your band to see if they they're medically fit sure go ahead this expedition be a persuasion try to convince them to work on your boys i mean work on his boys. if you want it's, it's not a big deal so he's That's like they're a... in the middle of training those who are unable and unfit to go will stay here and tend the stalls of the horse master that's fine okay uh you think that there's a couple of orcs that are cowards <laughs> don't want to go out however that they're perfectly perfectly willing to stay here and shovel shit and shoe horses that's fine so tell me do you mind telling me about yourself i guess he like looks so at you and he's like i am in the middle of training i mean i is I know I missed the meeting. He's <laughs> like, hey, can you talk now, buddy? He's like, no, I have a job. <laughs> I'm literally you... at my job. Hey, you want to talk, buddy? Hey, you want to grab some lunch? It's like, I wish I could, but no. No, I'm I under work. I understand. <laughs> uh, perhaps we can talk when you're less busy. He laughs at this. And he's like, I was less busy last night. I'm very sorry, I was sleepy. <laughs> you just weren't writing notes down or taking notes. That's what you weren't doing. I'm just very lazy. What can I say? Yeah, I mean, it's it's like this world has consequences. You make an appointment and you don't show up to the appointment. Guess what? <laughs> oh. I'm not cool. Remember this. Of course you will. I'm going to write this down. Okay, well, it's good catching up with you. you Enjoy know, your trip. Good. Uh, and then he rides his horse back over to his men who are once again in leather armor and they're doing workouts uh, you think that, that he is getting them pumped up you realize that they are mostly doing combat drills instead of like their normal routine mm. uh, they have their swords out and they're actually like fighting each other um, not in like I'm going to kill you but just get pumped up and psyched for <laughs> get the adrenaline drill. pumping that way that they'll be focused when the time comes okay interesting 
So, uh, can I look around the square to see if there's anyone else to talk to? Uh, of course, you see Commander Archon and his noble uh, guards, who are in full plate and half plate, uh, are of course standing, watching guard over the center area. Uh, you also see a few elves off to the off to the, like these are elves, elves, not like the drow, mm. uh, discussing stuff. And you also see the alchemist uh, mourner and the blacksmith Edwards. Uh, both of them are, of course, working on potions, and of course, the blacksmith's hammering away, uh, doing his job. Everybody's doing stuff. What? Hey, guards. Catches your fancy. Commander Archon nods to you and says, Hello, citizen. What can we do for you? Um, I was just curious if you've had any trouble around town recently. In regards to what, good citizen? Um, well, I'm a doctor. You require... If your guards should ever require medical treatment, make sure to let me know. Roll me a persuasion as you're trying to convince them, like, Hey, I'm a doctor. I am a doctor. <laughs> I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Uh, so he's like, uh, we have our own physicians. Okay. Uh, well, that's fair enough. I was just curious if uh, this town... Uh, I don't want to say like suffers a lot of crime rate, but... What, uh, you think that uh, criminal activity here isn't as bad as you would think it would be? Uh, the guards here and the... So this is like you don't rob from your backdoor neighbor, right? <laughs> so uh, if any criminal activity is happening, it would definitely be out in the wilderness, not here. Mm -hmm. So um, if somebody sees a score, they're going to rob them on the road, not here in town. I'm curious. What's it like being on guard in a town with like a dragon in it does that not raise any concerns with you guys or he says that those are the people who pay us you're I assume you're referring to the council of five yeah but I mean dragons naturally very bloodthirsty uh, genocide lizards how many dragons have you met I mean I've heard the stories everyone has heard the stories I've heard the stories as well. Yet Valseth seems different. Interesting. Well, as long as he's not, like, people aren't disappearing in the night, I guess that's okay. Not that that's been reported. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Are you right, concerned well, about Valseth? What have you heard? Um, I just... I don't know. I come from sort of, you know, sort of south a bit more, where people are a bit like, Whoa. Oh, you're from that city of Alkaline, yes. You're talking about the Inquisition's rumors and uh, propaganda. They would have you say here that uh, dragons are bloodthirsty animals that go around murdering. And in some parts, that is true. However, usually there is a reason. The Inquisition forgets that and just claims that they are bloodthirsty animals that need to be put down. After all, there's always two sides for every story. I would be interested to see how a dragon could be at peace with a civilization. How that sort of transpired. Oh. Are oh, you referring to the Blood Queen? Tell me more about the Blood Queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> expedition exposition the blood queen is a uh is a she who lives under the mountain uh she who makes the fires turn red at night he gestures to the north west <laughs> uh and he says there is the blood queen oh okay cool story bro yeah, you can see these these large mountains in the distance. Uh, you see, like, eruptions every so often. As I understand, her man, uh, the slave master Moore, was put to death. And yet she is still looking for someone to take his place. 
who knows who uh, that will be. Interesting. I did hear about this uh, violent criminal called... What was his, what was his name? Uh, a, a, a drawn or something? Oh yes, I've heard of this man as well. I, as, according to his claim, not everybody believes it, he killed more. And not only that, but he turned down the proposal of being the Blood Queen's second in command. A far-fetched tale, if I've ever heard one. However, he paid the gold, and people believe what they uh, get paid for, so. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, I have noticed a sharp decline in slave traders, yet people still ask for slaves every so often. Hmm. Well, I suppose this is still the, uh, you know, fairly lawless lands out there in the desert. Of course. My duty is to serve and protect here, not out there. <laughs> I will. <laughs> it's a whole different can of worms out there, I guess. This is a place of law and order. If you think otherwise, you best think again. Oh, I would, wouldn't dream of suggesting it. He nods. Uh, all right. It's been good talking to you. Anytime, citizen. You can call me Shrew if you like. It's my name. Uh, you think that he addresses you as citizen as a sign of uh, respect. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, citizen isn't like, you know... Uh, 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 he, he just addresses everyone like that, right? Unless he's in the council and you haven't seen him interact with the council, so... Okay, that's fine. You think that's how uh, he, he, he treats everyone equal, right? And he just calls everyone citizen. <laughs> That's fine. You're allowed to do that. Uh, okay. I'm going to go over and talk to these people. Hi. My name's Shrew. I'm a doctor. Uh, How's it so, going? So they turn and look at you as these two elves are discussing. Like, <clears throat> and they like turn and look at this filthy human approach them. And, like, <clears throat> and they stop talking and they're like, what can we do for you? Wait, hang on. I got to check something. Uh, I will say in Elvish, uh, hello and good morning. Uh, I just reply. I say, look, I can speak our language. I didn't merely wish to come up and meet the locals. Um, they like laugh is... at this. <laughs> my name is Shu. I'm a doctor. I can do medicine. Uh, so the. Uh... Harlan uh, says, uh, I'm Harlan, and this is my friend, uh, uh, Leodor, and uh, we don't require human aid. Okay, and you two are both, uh, I'm assuming, rangers of some sort? Uh, so I, I assume you're wanting a description of them. So sure. they're currently in desert garb. They have like a, a, a band around their heads. Uh, it's very much like they were designed specifically for this place, right? They said, uh, our business is none of your concern, human. Um, uh, they do look like rangers, but rangers specifically for uh, the endless desert. That's fine. I was merely being polite and taking a casual interest in... Oh, you can roll um, an insight here. Sure, I'll insight. I'm a doctor. I know these things. Uh, yeah, you get the sense that these are not locals at all, but probably emissaries from the Elf Kingdoms. Mm. Uh, do I, like, recognize the clothing as distinctly Elvish? Uh, so it is not Elvish. They're currently wearing, like, cloths made here, right? So, so do they have, like, emblems in them? Oh, no, they do not show emblems. However, with your insight, you're pretty confident that these people are not from around here. Uh, and you're fairly confident that they are officials. They could be emissaries, spies, rangers. You, they might be informants. You get the sense that these are not uh, your typical... Uh, local yokels. Okay. Does that make sense? 
Hmm. Can I make a like gesture subtly in Thieves' Camp while saying something else? Uh, sure. What do you say first? Establish what you say in Thieves' Camp. Uh, what, what do I need to say? Like, uh, is business good in Thieves' Camp? Okay. And then what do you say normally? Uh, so where have you come from? Are you traveling to somewhere or...? Uh, our duty is to the Elven Empire. I see. And, uh, the, uh, the Elven Kingdom, not the Empire. Okay. Uh, they do not recognize your thieves camp. All right, that's fine. Okay. Uh, in that case, I wish you both a good day. And if really? you should require my aid, just give my name a call. They like roll their eyes and it's like, oh look, a human playing doctor. Hey, what are you what are you trying to say? Humans can't be doctors. Uh, exactly. They said you nailed that right on the head. Listen, you're saying that right now, but you haven't tried my soup. It's a good soup. So like, you make no point, right? You make absolutely no point. And they're like, can you please just move along? <laughs> I'm sorry if I was disturbing you. Uh, they nod and they say, yes, you are disturbing us. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just an old <laughs> man. You want to try my soup? It's good. Uh, they look good at the you bones. as like a young, impetuous child, right? That's what they're looking at you at, right? Who knows how old these uh, elves could be? No respect for the doctors. So it's like you're a human or something. <laughs> Hey, you're a human, right? You guys? You guys are oh, human. No, no, these aren't humans at all. Uh, so, who do you approach? I'll talk to the alchemist, I think this is. Uh, Mounter is currently, like, fumbling. Like, his, his hands are, like, fumbling as he's, like, mixing these potions together. It doesn't explode on him, but instead it just, like, bubbles over. And you see this audible, like, disappointment as you see this, like, blah, 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 blah. And it starts, like, getting on his lap and he starts cursing. He's like, ah, son of a... Ah. What are you making there, friend? This is, uh, trying to make uh, some uh, alchemy. Who are you and what are you doing bothering me? You made me spill my stuff. You didn't make him spill it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Shrew. I'm a member of a guild. Excellent. Yeah, take my car. Excellent. You're here to buy? Or so, oh, you're selling crap. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, do you have medical supplies? He says, I'm my own physician. Yes. Can I buy uh, medical supplies? <laughs> roll me a medical check as you're like observing this guy. <laughs> observing this alchemist. Okay, insight? What's that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, medical. This is definitely medical. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's plus six instead of plus one. So 15. Okay, okay. You, you clearly know this guy's not, uh, uh, you know, right in the mind. Uh, you quickly pick that up. Like this guy is an alchemist who's not quite sane. And he's but like, I'm my own doctor. You going to buy something or what? I don't need some street peddler peddling his goods here. Any bandages, ointment? He says, I got them. And he like gestures and you see like herbal kits and medical kits and all types of kits and behind them. Great. Uh, he's like, you, you are like some swindler, aren't you? Trying to move in on my business? No, no, I'm just a humble servant of the people. I'm the potion maker around here. You hear me? I'm the potion maker. I don't need some random doodob nit nitwit coming through and taking my business. Hey, hey, it's okay. I don't make potions. I just chop off hands and stuff. Is that right? That's my cure potions, you don't uh, nitwit. You're taking my, my, my people, my customers. I mean, you cut off limbs when it beyond the potion limit the preparation what <laughs> he like looks at you like I'm crazy but you're nuts what so when a, a limb has gone bad you gotta cut it off in order to preserve the body right that's, that's my job and your job is making potions I don't make potions so I don't know why you think I make potions 
roll me a persuasion as you're like, hey, man, I'm not moving in on you. I'm not taking your job. Okay. So he, like, calms down after a little bit. He's like, oh, well, of course, you're not taking my job. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a doctor in a bottle. You're just a doctor. And he, like, settles down, right? Settles like, settles yeah, down. I'm just a doctor. I, I don't do anything else. He, like, frowns at He's better not. He says, you better not be moving in on my competition, son. Uh, he's just as old as you and just as grouchy. Um, <laughs> Can I make a so just turn thieves can't? Uh, you may, yes. What do you say in thieves can't? Is business good? Uh, he does not recognize that. Okay, that's fine. That's what you got thieves can't for. Uh, he brings you in close and he's like, you want to buy some poison? Tell me more about this poison. It's expensive? Oh, for you, a fellow doctor, I'll make sure that it's less expensive. <laughs> he says, for just 200 gold, I can give you a, a, a killer potion. Um, Have you ever met someone who's ever had 200 gold pieces? Uh, he says, wasn't there that one guy... Yeah, there's that Adrian fellow who uh, came in and I dropped gold like it was nothing. (laughs) Hey, hey, let me tell you, there's this one guy who almost paid me 100 gold just for one of my normal common health potions. I suckered and swindled him. Oh, it was awesome. It was no more than like two weeks ago. It was awesome. (laughs) Gave me 88 gold. Okay, so what, is that your going rate for potions? Or is, uh, is that tourist rate? Yeah. Gotta give this. that tourist rate, you know. Oh yeah, there's definitely it. Special price, madam. Let's go inside. Oh yeah, you think that it's fair? Yeah, it's perfectly acceptable, right? I mean, that's that's about how much potions worth, isn't it? Like eighty-eight years of salary. I mean, if you're dying, it's magic. Magic spooky. I mean, if you're just, if you're dying, uh, and this potion literally saves your life, so I mean, it's basically that. What yeah. would you be willing to pay? <laughs> so, in your mind, right? In your mind, yeah, that's a fair price. That's, that's, that's a fair price. I'm looking for something a little less uh, supernatural. Just, uh, you know, bandages and. Stuff. Can I just get a whole kit for how much would that be? He says, I've got several kits. What type of kits are you looking for? Um, specifically to do with... A healer's kit? Oh, yeah. Healer's kit. That sounds uh, perfect. Yes. It'd be th- five gold. Five gold? Yeah. You can insight mm, this. I'm going to insight because I am a doctor. And I know how much things are worth. Uh, you think that's a little expensive? Uh, expensive. Maybe we can talk about the price a bit because, you know, I'm very... I'm a traveling man. Did you hear the rumors of of uh, the, the plague? Oh, he, like, looks at you as, like, the plague. Let's see if he knows anything about the plague. <laughs> well, he's got a plus two. That's not bad. Oh, don't give me that hogwash. Everybody's got the plague nowadays. Everybody's got the plague. Oh, plague, plague, plague. Oh, uh, no, I mean, like... He, he says, uh, how about this? How about this? I'll give you a good steal for four gold, a healer's kit. You could incite this as well. Okay, I'll incite again. Yep. I mean, yeah, that seems more reasonable. Is it how much I would expect to pay? Uh, so you're out in the desert, right? Uh, he doesn't know you. Uh, he kind of believes your claims, but, you know, you kind of, like, you put him at ease, right? You're not stealing his business. Uh, but he's still upselling you. You think he's upselling you by at least one gold. Okay. Uh, so, I'll be honest, friend. I do not have a lot of coin on me. Perhaps I can, we can negotiate, uh, I do something for you. Uh, maybe... Three gold? Roll me a persuasion. <laughs> Let me tell you about this soup, boy. 
says, no, lad, no. Four gold is, is my final offer. Take it or Very leave well. it. That's, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take that offer. Says, I knew you needed it. <laughs> oh, you you really got me there. Ha ha! <laughs> Not to worry. He was kit. How many healer kits you got? Just the one, because I do not have a lot of gold. So, uh, you, fast. <laughs> you, you get a lot of tourists around here. Says so there's a sucker born every day, and he like bites your gold. <laughs> uh, I I wouldn't bite it. It's been in a, you know what? Never mind. He bites the gold. You think this crazy ass alchemist is just crazy as shit? But he's got good stuff. It's legit stuff. But he's a little, uh, he's a little off kilter. <laughs> That's fine. It's uh, just making his business. Oh yes, very much so. So you've been here long? So it's like, oh, I was here before the slavers came in. I've been here ever since. Slavers used to buy concoctions for me all the time, but you know, with this new free trade and stuff like that, it's it's worked out pretty well. I've gotten business from all types instead of just slavers. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you used to be like a, a backstreet sort of. His Who are you talking about backstreet? I'm out front like everyone else. Uh, the shop looks raggedy as shit, by the way. <laughs> the shop looks, uh, right. It doesn't look clean or at all. This could very much be a back backstreet. If you were in the city of Alkaline, yeah, this would be a sleazy part of town. But uh, you know, it's I, okay I didn't for... make, mean to make any accusations. Uh, I just maybe we can work together sometime. We're both men of science, of course. He says you just you just patch people up. I I do the real science, and he like pulls out like this notebook of like uh, detailed notes of like what experiments he's been working on. <laughs> as you're flipping oh. through the pages, go ahead and roll me a quick perception as you're like flip 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 flip. Sure, oh, perception. It's got keen eyes. Oh, no, not, not keen enough. He's too fast. As he's like flip, 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 flip. Yeah, you just, it just looks like a bunch of random crap to you. Uh, you don't pick up on any of the current works that he's doing. So what is it you're experimenting on at the moment? He says, uh, suckers now. <laughs> he like looks at you. It's big old goofy ass grin on his face. Okay, thanks for the book. Here you uh, go, they sit back. You think that, you know, he's trying to, you know, as you're like going from sales to like personal conversation, uh, he's trying to like wrap it up so he can get back to his experiments, right? Uh, do you mind if I watch, I guess? Because it's very interesting to me. Uh, roll me a persuasion with disadvantage. Right? <laughs> Are you trying to move on to my business? Yeah, because you're literally like, hey, I want to just watch you, man. Uh... So he seems like really hesitant. He says, uh, for a gold, you can watch me. A whole gold. A whole, a whole gold piece, you can watch me. Work. You know how much I make a year, man? You know how long this has taken me to do? I didn't think so. Thought you were a man of science, wanted to know knowledge. Knowledge always has a price. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense for him. Yeah, he's going right. to charge you a gold to let you watch him. How about this? If you let me watch, I'll, uh, I'll cook up oh, uh, some soup for you. It's good soup. Roll me a persuasion with disadvantage. <laughs> I mean, I'm allowing this to happen, right? I'm allowing this to happen, so. That one. I hate Zoom. Oof. Oof. Well, I mean, so he's like, okay, yeah, get out of here, nosy. Get out of here. And he, like, pushes you out the shop, right? He's like, I have important things to do. Uh, yeah, so he boots you out of his shop. Uh, and he's like, you better come back with business. And stop being a peeping Tommy, you little freak. And, like, the guards, <laughs> like, kind of, like, turn and look at you as they're like... <laughs> crazy alchemists you know how they're like <laughs> uh, you think that he's worked on, on Mercury Mercury oh that's interesting 
All right, let's just move along to the last guy in the row, I guess. Uh, yeah, you see this blacksmith who's currently team, team, team. He's currently working on like a door hinge uh, that moves back and forth. Um, he like glances up and he's like, "Hey, stranger, what can I do for you?" Uh, I'm just new in town, just uh, browsing really. Uh, got any recommendations? Anything hot off the shelves? He says, this place is only for good, hard-working people. He says, you need something like a shovel or a pickaxe or something of quality? Maybe you need something, uh, a button or a, uh, something, something good. I got some scrap metal that needs to be worked up. What are you interested in? Um. Hmm. Do you just have a fine buckle for your pants there? Do you sell like a a really big cauldron for soup? He looks at you and he's like, metal's not as common around here. He says, if you're looking for big stuff, you might want to head down south towards the city of Alkaline. A big cauldron would be, be a lot of money, a lot of metal going into that. Okay, I'm just curious. Uh, I'm Shu, by the way. Uh, Hello, uh, Doctor. I am the blacksmith, Edwards. Nice to meet you, Edwards. Uh, you been in town long, or is this is your, it's just setting up? He like gestures, and he's like, this is my home. Uh, and, you, know, you see, like, this little <laughs> shop, right? Of all the places that you've been, this one looks like the most... Uh, normal i guess you could say uh in the sense of like a city of alkaline right so very hellenistic style uh this man's clearly put in a lot of work and effort this man is a man of skill uh he's done a lot of thatching and custom works uh you think that he might also be somewhat familiar with masonry because of the sandstones layout it's very much a hellenistic style Interesting. I think if he could, he would have clay tops instead of a hay roof. Uh. <laughs> uh, a thatched roof. If you ever have a like burn or uh, you get caught, just you know, I have a doctor. Let he me laughs at this, right? He laughs at this. He's like, I'm a strong man. I don't need a doctor. He like chuckles at this and he like pulls out his glove and you see all these like marks and poxes on his skin of where like the metals come up and bit him. All right. So as he's working, the metal like flings up, the slag comes up and hits him. And he's just pocked marked with it. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm, well, that's very impressive, but perhaps you will to. Well, I won't tell you how to do your job. Uh, if I need anything made, I'll let you know. Uh, you can do a medical check. Sure, let's do a medical check before I dismiss this guy. Yeah. This will kill you. <sighs> yes, so you're pretty sure that leather could easily protect him, right? Mm. So right. Have you considered just wearing gloves? He says yes, but it's in the middle of the endless desert. It gets hot as hell. You either get burnt by the slag or get roasted <laughs> alive. Hmm, interesting. Have you tried just like I mean the fountain is like just there, right? You could just have wet gloves. He like looks at you. He's like, "Leave the blacksmithing to me." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I should have. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Edward. He uh, nods to you in reply. Uh, I'll go back in. So, folks at home, if you use leather and get it wet, guess what happens to it? It breaks. Uh, no. Gets itchy. Uh, so there's two things. First thing, it becomes brittle, right? So the texture of it. So if you got wet leather, right, and you work it, like in gloves, right, uh, it'll become brittle, and then it will break. Or, or depending on the leather, it will shrink. <laughs> so, not the best solution by uh, our faithful hero. 
That's fair enough. Don't get leather wet. Or if you do, make sure that you like dry it out really well. Can I? Or, or seal it. You could use beeswax or something like that and seal it. Uh, <laughs> that's what they used to do back then. Beeswax. That's interesting. Anyways, go ahead. What do you do? Uh, sorry, Miss. I didn't. I don't think I caught your name. So you come back to the rose. Uh, you re-enter, and you still see Aura and Sarah still talking about, no, oh, no, it needs more seasoning. And you see her sipping this chicken noodle soup. Uh, you approach the dark side of the tavern where the uh, drow are, right? And you come back, and you say, what? I'm, I'm sorry, miss. I don't think I caught your name. I am Lady Isabella. Nice to meet you. Uh... I was talking to a few people around town, and I heard something about a manticore raid. Uh, she smiles at this, and she says, yes, it's a raid been sh uh, shipped off and sold. I what assume you're talking about those nobles? And she's like, gestures, and like, sucker <laughs> born every day. Ah, that's not the first time I've heard that today. She says, surely you've not been taken advantage of. Oh, no, 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 I never. I'm a very capable man of reasonable standing. Is this a deception? Are you uh, trying to Are you trying to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty badass. I'm a badass? Yeah. Do I have to lie about being a badass? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> What's my deception? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm a badass. Uh, I so this brag, gets a but... laughter, right? This is the one from like the, this is the like you're a doctor, not a badass. Uh, so do you guys do business around here? Uh, we are currently in the middle of business. Uh, our business is our own. Why? Uh, do you want to end? So I'll make a gesture in Thieves' Camp for being, like, I'm interested. Uh, you notice, like, nobody's watching this corner. It's almost like, um... You can speak freely here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's good to know. Uh, well... I don't know. I've just... I need to sort of get back in touch with my roots, I think. And uh, what's your roots? Uh, what well, are you trying Luna. to get in touch with? There's this uh, lady I got lost on the, you know, you know, the old slaves route, don't you? She smiles at this and she's like, very well. Well, we got uh, split up on, on the way. Uh, just trying to find out where she is. So I'm just trying to get into the just make the right contacts you know uh this person was important to you yes uh she kind of like considers this for a moment and she's like well uh, depending on what we can find uh what are you looking for who are you looking for um so there's this dragonborn, blue scaled, uh, has this very unique, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's a birthmark on her face. Sort of like she a white light. She smiles at this and she says, continue. <laughs> um, so. I recently got separated from my group as we were making our way through the Golden Plains. And I'm sort of looking to get back into uh, the wagon, so to speak. I'm, well, you know, I'm a traveling man. I want to see the world. You are a busy man. Uh, but, you know, I'm a busy woman. And, you know, I might have some information... But you know, I just don't. I just don't remember. You know, it's, it's just. 
It's on the tip of my fingers. <laughs> mm. uh, you definitely know that this is uh, obvious. Uh, thieves can't for you know pay first information later. Okay. Well, I don't have a lot on me right now, but oh, so sorry. Was, if only there was a way you could make a lot of money. And she's like, I know some, a few things you might be able to do for me. You interested, <laughs> Doctor? <laughs> well, uh, you know, with beautiful woman like yourself, I'd be flattered. Oh, a handsome man like you, I'd hate to be taken advantage of. <laughs> but I'm in a generous mood. So, Doctor, and she like crosses her arms and she's like, what can you do? <laughs> uh, she's literally asking, what are you capable of? Can I, like, lay stuff out on the table? Sure, yeah. So I'll just, like, I'll let my tools do the speaking for me. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> As we're kind so, of getting this intimate scene of your character and Isabella and this wolf, right? This hungry wolf panting off to the side. The two drow characters, like, crossing their arms and just watching. He put what is pair. it that you lay on the table? I put down some thieves' tools. Uh, a short sword and dagger. Oh. Uh, and she, like, a... picks them up and examines them. Uh, tell me about these weapons. So, the short sword is... I feel like it's a very sort of common blade. Like a, oh yes, very much so. But very much designed to be like a one-handed duelist blade. Uh, and the dagger is very, very sharp, almost like a scalpel. Uh, so she says, uh, her 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 most. Uh, she puts her hand on the scalpel and the uh, um, short sword, and she's like, "These two things will do quite nicely." I, I didn't finish putting stuff out, but sure. Uh, she she's, she ends it, right? She's like, okay. I don't need anything else, but the short sword will be really nice. Uh, she says, in the desert, there is a man that owes me a debt. Oh. Uh, apparently, apparently, he hasn't been meeting quota. And I really don't like people who don't you know, meet their quotas. So I need you to go out into the desert and I want you to make example out of him in front of his men. I understand. Uh, and this is just for information? It seems like... I, how many days travel are we talking? How many men? Let's see if she knows. That's a good question. Uh, she says, oh, just... You know, couple of days here, a couple of days there, five, seven days. I mean, you're skilled, right? You know how to survive. <laughs> I mean, I survived by not fighting on the front lines. That's the, the doctor way. Oh, oh, don't worry. Uh, I want you to convince him that you're a doctor. And then when he's not, when he has his guard let down, I want you to kill him, cut off his head and show it to his men. Okay, tell me more about this man. Uh, she says, oh, 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 you want to know about this little target we've got. I mean, I need to know his name, I think, in order to find him. Uh, she smiles and nods in agreement. She says, uh, between the endless desert uh, and the... Uh, golden uh, plains there's a bandit captain who hasn't been keeping up on his side of the bargain and I really don't like that you know I really don't like that and uh, I just I just need you to take care of uh, the bandit captain <laughs> interesting well I mean there's a lot of first off are you interested here. in this job is this um, something that you'll be able to do? 
I think I might require some proof of, you know. I, I need a little assurance of what I'm, I'm signing up for, I think. Uh, what do you mean? So this is a job for information, not for gold, is what I understand. But oh, I'm not there's... sure what you know. <laughs> oh, there's gold in it as well. Ah, uh, well now you're speaking my language. <laughs> oh, you think I just send you out to die? Oh no, that's not how this works, honey. No. No, you'll be compensated. Uh, I assumed we were talking about this missing person that I was looking for. Of course. A dragonborn, blue scales. I might know who you're talking about. Hmm. Interesting. So... Okay. Well, if you think you know <laughs> the person... Of course. All right. I'll see what I'll, what I can do, assuming I can find this camp. Oh, I know exactly where they're at. However, you know, I need you to take care of the problem. Can you do this? <laughs> um, is there a, a deadline for this job? Oh, I moved? expect you back within seven days, easily. Seven days? Mm -hmm. Well, as long as that's realistic. I'm a... <laughs> you know, I might... But I, I can't see why that would be unreasonable. I mean, this ma this very bad man has not paid his debts, and that's... Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Hmm. <laughs> okay. This is this something you can do? Um, I will consider your offer, but I will need to consult my traveling companions. Excellent. Uh, if seven days pass by and it's not done, I'm going to assume that this dragonborn that you were talking about just disappeared. Interesting. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, Lady Isabella. Not a problem, Shrew. Not a problem. And uh, if you ever start feeling ill, just <laughs> look for the doctor, I guess. I'm a doctor. Hi. Of course. Of course. All right. Shrew will gather his supplies and get moving. Uh, are you going after this individual? Did you shake her hand? She offers you her hand. Like, accept the deal. Uh, I, I shouldn't shake on anything before I've got confirmation from my traveling companions. Okay. But if, we, if I do get there, if I can convince them that there is, you know, good, good money. Yeah, these are bandits, right? Yeah, so. Gotta kill these bandits. <laughs> then we shake. This, this yeah. is good to you. Uh, she nods. She says, "Take uh, take twenty four hours. I expect a uh, expect a results uh, by the end of the day, or the end of the twenty four hours." All right. Okay. <laughs> Another appointment. Here I go. Another Oops. appointment to forget. Okay. So. I've I've left several strings for you, man. Left several strings. I I so can what see the string. Uh, I mean, it's hard to know because uh, you got several adventures laid out before you, and you have a big ass wide open world to explore. I mean, can we just like go out and kill a bandit and come back before the session ends? You tell me. Can you do it? I want to believe, but I mean, if you play your cards right and the dice roll lucky for you, you should easily be able to do it. However, okay. knowing your luck, <laughs> knowing your luck, you might die. <laughs> Here's the thing: if I if I go for one, then I lose the other. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, so let me be clear: this is, would be like a, a subtlety thing, right? This is would be subject to uh, 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 subtlety. You'd require your intelligence, right? This wouldn't be a brute force match. 
because he's a bandit captain, which means that he's got his men around him. So you'd have to get the bandit captain alone and murder him, cut off his head, and then announce to his men that Lady Isabella you know, killed him. Uh, you were sent in her stead. All right? Make an example okay. out of this. Uh, okay, that's fine. So if, if you play your cards right, you could easily get away with this. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I need to go talk to... I mean, surely this is... You're a doctor, right? So this is like the first time that somebody's like, Hey, man, as you're examining this person, I want you to murder their ass, right? I feel like Shrew is prepared to go to some lengths in order to get information. I mean, you're... You're a rogue. <laughs> Questionable choices. You're morally in ambiguous at best. <laughs> I mean, this guy's evil. I'm killing an evil guy. For, for yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move back to this room. I think. Let's okay. Uh, as you're like uh, coming in, right? You see like this dinner tray that's been set out for her, and it's like halfway eight, and you see a uh, 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 mud skipper is currently laying down in the bed sleeping. She seems to have taken your advice. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, I will try not to wake up, but also, is there food for me? I leave food. Uh, so, yes, there is food down here. Uh, are you going to eat half of her food? Because it's only half eight. I will. Am I allowed to bring the food from here yes. up here and eat it in my yes. bedroom? You may, of course. Or you can just say, <laughs> I want room service, just bring the food here, right? Room service. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I will eat in the room, if that's okay. And wait you have for an agreement. Skip it to You're a business partner with the, with the, with the uh, barkeep and bar witch. <laughs> Aura and Sarah, you are business partners with her. Nice. We're allowing you to sleep here for your doctor-approved soup, right? That they're selling currently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I I will eat some soup in my room. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, what time of day is it at this point? Uh, I mean, you tell me. Like, how long did you take doing everything? I feel like there was a good hour of just walking around town. I mean, yeah, probably it's was like... a bit. I assume that was like two, 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 two. Well, actually, it was probably a couple of hours. Probably in like lunchtime afternoon now yep makes sense but shrew will sort of wait for mudskipper to open her eyes if she does uh you see here uh hi she wakes up soon or no she's out uh so yeah she's like snoring right recovering from the terrible dreams and, and stuff that she's been having uh Hello? she must have been like having restless nights you've dropped or have oh, I dropped? No. I see me. Okay, I think it's just my 5e uh, roll 20. I'll just roll it again. Okay. I'll, okay. It's, it's nice to have the Skype still work. Cause... Yes. It's like, <laughs> it's no, good. don't fall away. Get on it, roll uh, 20. Get on it. It seems like it every once, once every session. Mm. So I think I will wake. Let's skip it as gently as I can. Uh, sure. Uh, she she slowly comes around, right? She was she was just dead to the world because of all the things that have been happening. Uh, you wake her up and she's like, oh, "What's what is it? What is it true?" Um, I'm very sorry to disturb your rest, but I've uh, <laughs> something I've wrong. Got... Are we under attack? No, no, it's fine. I just <laughs> wanted to talk to you about some some of the information I've gathered. She like blinks and like rubs her eyes and she's like, "Yeah, go go ahead. What's up?" She's okay, like, oh. so we've got uh, sort of two potential job offers. Well, I have two potential job offers. I'm not sure if you're interested or not. Sure. Uh, one of them is exploring a tomb of some sort, and the other is a. Making an example of a bandit camp. I'm not sure how you feel about that. 
Uh, so just, I think your character would be smoother. Bounty hunter. Right? Yeah. Bounty hunting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bounty hunter. <laughs> I, no, I just, uh, I want to murder someone. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, you could say that, but it'd be better to just be like, I'm, I'm here for bounty. Right. Oh yeah. I'm a bounty hunter. I, sure. Yeah. And she like rubs her eyes and she's like, what, what did you decide upon? Uh, I'm, well, I was hoping to talk to Adric, but he's sort of out at the moment. Uh, I'm sort of thinking which, which one should I sort of go for? Adric won't be up until night. He said that he had to talk to the dragon or something. Ah, I see. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll just... Hmm. I mean, it's, it's a tricky one. Because I'm not sure which one is going to be more valuable. <laughs> or which one I can sort of pull off. Uh, Just to be clear, you probably don't need Mudskip for either of them. That's true. I was, I mean, I if you want to check. tag her along, you may. But you have to convince her, right? She's so not just I, going to follow you like, hey, I'm going to go murder somebody. No, you have to convince her to join you. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure if I was out of town, would you be all right on your own? Uh, she's like, well, I mean, I, I figured that we just relax and recover, but I didn't know we would be looking for work. Uh, well, I've got some personal business that I'm personally looking into. Uh, mind you, you weren't you weren't assaulted, knocked unconscious, broken arm, scar on your face, right? You you weren't under that, right? So mm. you're you're fresh, right? You're fresh while she's I'm... still recovering from her injuries. <laughs> yeah, you you can rest. I think that's probably what you should be doing. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. She's still capable. It's just that she is not as powerful as you guys are, right? I don't know. I don't know what she's like. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> your character is very powerful. Um, well, which which one do you think sounds more interesting? Uh, highs will be tomb, lows will be bounty hunter. She says the tomb. Damn it! I was thinking of doing the bounty hunting. <laughs> hmm. Excellent. Uh, but I want to do both. They both sound fun. I need to choose before I waste any more time. Uh, so she like looks at you and she's like, "Are you just stalling?" <laughs> uh, it's just I'm not. The thing is, I I know that in order to find this person I'm looking for, I need to basically kill someone. So who are you looking sure. for? Uh, it's a very old friend of mine. She was a dragonborn, and we got very close on the road while we were traveling. Uh, but we got separated, and I'm looking for her. Uh, she says, describe her. Sure. A blue dragonborn, sort of, a, like, white mark on her face like i think it's a birthmark looks a bit like a lightning bolt her eyes go wide and she says what's what's her name <sighs> oh god i gotta come up with a name now yeah uh yeah, yeah you do you didn't think this would happen she just crit that by the way she knows exactly <laughs> who you are who she, who she is who, what's her name her name is tanith tanith that's a name uh, she says Tanith is uh, is in the uh, kingdom of Alkaline. She is, of course. Wait, for how long? She says I don't know. I haven't been back some months, but I know Tanith. She's she's good. So do you? She's a lot you, older. She she helped she helped uh, me find the Canonists. Oh, okay. So she's a developer now. Uh, she kind of smiles at though. She says, not, uh... Mm. <laughs> she kind of like... She can... What's what's the... Mm? Uh, you can incite this. She's a, she's a slave. We could just 
Yep, she's a slave. Where's my insight? I think I closed my character sheet. One second. Where's my character? Adric. Where's your character? It's not Adric. It's not Adric. It's Shrew. Oh, Shrew. I thought his name was <laughs> Drew for a second. Shrew. I know my character. Honest. No, you don't. You still think you're playing Adric. <laughs> it's like, who are you looking for, man? There you go. What'd you roll? Ten. Uh, so you, she's like, she gives you like this shrug, but you know, uh, her ex expressions and micro expressions don't tell you a lot. You get the sense that when you say like, oh, she's, she's the faithful. And she's like, eh, kind of get that sense. Like, so she's not faithful. She's just working there. Uh, she says, how do I tell you this? True. Uh, but is she well, uh, is she okay? She's in the service of, uh, the canonists. Like as a, what, what, what do you mean by service? Like she was at the fort? She's a, well, when I last I left, uh, she was in the service of the canonists and her properties. Uh, she was a servant there. Okay. Like. She was well treated, though, right? She says, uh, kind of like me, yes. Okay. However, she, she, she oh, didn't do embrace the this? message. She did, she does not serve uh, faithfully. Okay. Uh, her tongue kind of outran her, her, her position sometimes. And the Kenneth had to put her in her place a couple of times. I see. Okay. You, are like, uh, you can roll an insight. You won't like sugar. Uh, she's thing. trying to sugarcoat this. Yep. She's trying to sugarcoat this. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so you're pretty confident that the canonists uh, purchased this dragonborn, blue dragonborn. Okay. Started training her, right, as what uh, she would have done with uh, currently Mudskipper. However, uh, she fell to the side probably because of age, right? Mm -hmm. And you're pretty confident that uh, Mudskipper took her place. And unlike, unlike your friend, uh, she bought into the, the faithful. Well, probably your faithful companion probably got discarded to the side. So where, where is she? Just on the streets? So. No, she's, she still works on the estate. I can't go back there. Uh, true. Uh, yeah, if you see yeah. me without the canonists, I, I'm a, I'm a dead dragonborn. I I kind of need to go there, I think. But I at least I don't need to go kill anyone anymore. Wow, that's saving me a lot of time. I mean, sometimes just asking around. <laughs> guess what? Yeah. Guess what? You don't have to murder people. Yeah, that is a possibility. <laughs> Thank you, but Skipper. Uh, the, clearly, the Holy Master intended us to meet, huh? I thank the RP Dice Gods. <laughs> yeah, the RP Dice Gods. Uh, well, I guess they're going to let down this drow woman now. I mean, it's better to say, like, sorry, I can't, can, I can't follow that contract. Or, my apologies, but other uh, complications arose. I won't be able to fulfill it. Right. So, I mean, there's ways out of it. Okay. Well, uh, she didn't give you a name. She didn't give you a place. You just think that she's just after some bandit guy. So, yes. and you're not getting paid. So, <laughs> she's you know, it's yes. no skin off her chest unless you know you go and tell the authorities. Then it might be something. But other than that, she doesn't give probably two craps. Okay. So, uh, so you're, the, you're the first person that turned her down, killing somebody. <laughs> I think I'm going to take this a uh, ruins exploration job and then make my way use the funds to sort of buy transit like hopefully by boat to city of alkaline i know there's a she, river she says true true i mean even if you go to her right i mean what do you think is going to happen well if i make money off this ruins maybe i can 
give off the appearance of being a, a minor noble, uh, like purchase the dragonborn lady back. Might work. <laughs> Uh, well, she says it in very doubting tone, right? She says it might work. Don't forget that the canoness, right? The person that you'd have to buy it from was at Fort Malgrave. Okay, but she must have a successor or a someone who inherited her will. If the canoness is dead... Uh, all of her assets would be would turn be turned over to the Inquisition. Okay, so I just need to buy this the, uh, the Tanith Tanith. Is that yeah? That's that I I remember my character's name. Uh, if if Tanith is viewed as nothing of value to the other Inquisitions, like she's not faithful at all, she could be destroyed. How much time do you think I have? She says, I don't know if the Inquisition is even aware that uh, the... Oh my goodness gracious, what just happened there? Uh, <laughs> that the Kenanus may be killed. Like, I don't even know if the Kenanus is alive or not. Well, I think the time for me to act is, is now, then. What in the world... Okay. That's weird. What's up? Oh my gosh, roll 20. Is... You're killing me, roll 20. You're killing me, roll 20. <laughs> Can't do this, roll 20. Kill me, roll 20. You're killing me here. There we go. Uh, it said that it crashed. I'm not sure why it crashed. Oh no, it crashed. Said stopped functioning. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Uh, At least my porn wasn't up there. That's what <laughs> okay. This, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's still up for me. There we go. Okay, I'm back in. I'm back in. Okay, so let's skip. Uh, I'm gonna take this uh, excavation job, see what it if it turns out to be like, you know the gold rush could be my opportunity to get rich quick uh, and then quickly head to the Alkaline City before Tanith can be sold or so that worse, she'll be sold. yeah I, I, I know what the Inquisition d does to non-humans uh, roll me knowledge history uh, sure. What do I know? I'm just a common man. Okay. Well, you don't know nothing. Uh, so you've heard rumors, right? These are untrue, right? These are untrue rumors. Okay. Uh, you, you think that they'll be burned at the stake and everybody will eat them in this wonderful orgy-filled blood fest of, of gore and ecstasy <laughs> as that's not true but that's what your character believes right that's that's the horrors that are running through his head mm -hmm. i mean that sounds like the sort of thing that he'd sort of be saying out loud like <laughs> don't you know that they eat the people <laughs> she frowns at you says of course not that's not what they do at all we're not savages well <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's awesome. a lot of murdering and burning at the stake that is true you have seen you've seen uh heretics being burned at the stake yes you have yes i have yes that's actually a common practice uh what you've never eaten people off the stake before? oh they don't eat them they don't eat them uh but they do get burned Seems like a waste. Could make lots. Um, hang on, that's a very dark time for the sudden true. That's pretty dark, man. Now we're going into cannibalism. So we're going into like heresy and witch burning and stuff. Anyway, now we're, we're going to cannibal. <laughs> cancel, cancel. Okay, all right. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna go talk to Armok. See if I can get on this exhibition team. Excellent. Come on down to Armok. Gonna eat the rest of my food. Sweet. As I'm going back down the stairs, can I say a few passing words to Isabella? To be like. Uh, yeah, she like nods to you. Uh, I'm afraid something's come up. I can't take this contract at the moment. I have oh. pressing matters to attend. Oh, that's so sad. I could have smuggled her out. Uh, you just have to make this all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good luck. Good, dr- good luck, Shrew. I'm sorry to hear that you're... Uh... Uh. Sorry to hear that. Wait. Oh. I mean, this is how they do it, right? They keep bringing you back in. Keep. Bring, I've got a way out. I'm going to bring you right back in. That's how they do it. I mean, I, I need. I need some sort of proof so that you can. You have the resources to bring out this person. So uh, they like look at Isabella, and Elizabeth, Isabella like raises an eyebrow, and she says, "You doubt me." I don't know you. We've never met before. She says, that's fair. Goodbye. I mean, if you don't trust her, there's no point in her trusting you, right? I mean... I I mean, you're literally... I mean, thieves, right? It's like, you gotta promise me this, right? And then I'll promise you that, right? And then when something breaks down, something else happens, right? Can I make some sort of history check to see if I if Isabella has a reputation among thieves? Uh, so as a person who's got a bit of a background, so a good thief you would never hear about. <laughs> but I mean, you hear about to... the failures, right? You hear about the failures, but you never hear about the successes because they were successful. But she seems to be like a fixer, right? She gets people to do. She's got like a. Not network. quite sure what she is. I feel like that she's like, do this for me, and then I'll get my people to do a thing for you. It's almost like something, and then something, and then something happens. I'll be in touch, maybe. She says, either way, gold or blood doesn't matter to me. What does matter to you? She smiles at that and she says, uh, I'll see you later, Shrew. <laughs> uh, Lady Isabella. Run away from the very <laughs> lady. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. oh, well, there's, there's supposed to be a threatening undertone with her, right? There's supposed to be this threat. Right? She's spooky. She's got... You know, skeletons. Oh. Okay. Uh, you approach Amak. Uh, it's in the afternoon, right? So the orcs are currently like in the shade, taking a breather. Uh, Amak's like going over strategy and talking about how, uh, well, you can't understand orcs. So he's like talking in orcish, right? But he's like pulling out these diagrams, and from these diagrams you can like say see like battle patterns and tech tactics of like how they do it so he's like teaching them this all right uh as they're like currently under the shade right it's midday right so the heat is bearing down what are you doing miss mr mock i hope i'm not interrupting again (laughs) yeah uh he turns and looks at you and says yes what is it uh I just wanted to let you know that I'm available now and I can stay here and wait until we're ready to discuss. Excellent. We'll leave in the morning. Okay. I'm uh, interested in going on this venture with you. Uh, Is there anything you'd like me to prepare myself or is your party organizing rations and water? It says bring what you want. I'd recommend uh, what you can carry, so... If you've got it, get it. So there's no wagon of water or anything? He says, no. We walk. We march. 
Okay. As long as I don't have to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think at uh, Shrew is going to be happy to wait till the next day and then depart on this venture. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, so are you heading out into the endless desert? With this group? Yes. Uh, so I'm assuming we're, we're fast forwarding, right? Hmm. We we're skipping the night and we're jumping right into you hitting the desert, right? Unless there's anything that I've missed that I need to do, I think. Uh, what do you bring? That's a good question. What do you bring? Uh, let's see. He has... You're currently here. He has a water skin. Mm -hmm. Is that going to last me the journey? It'll last you, uh, I think it's two days, two days. And how long is the journey? Uh, do you ask? I'm like, how long is the journey? <laughs> he says seven days. Okay, can I buy some more water skins then? It's a good call. Where are you going to buy the water from? Uh, I mean, the water fountain is free, I think. But what about the water skins? Uh, it's uh, like a, it's like the leather man, I think. Yes. Or, uh, Sorry, so to... you can go to the stable master William, right? He'll sell you the stuff that you're looking for. Uh, Mr. William, I take it. Okay, he says like he's got a wagon, he's got some horses. Oh, what are you interested in? Uh, I'm gonna need some water skins, please. Excellent. He says it'll be five silver per bag. Yes. Yeesh. Do you perhaps just have like a uh, like a crate or a barrel I could carry? It'd be a hundred silver. A hundred silver for a barrel. Oh, uh, this is like a, a like a like a keg. <laughs> this isn't something that you carry around. This is, this is a big 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 barrel. <laughs> sure, I could I could use a keg. Uh, do you have uh, something to transport this these items in? I just assumed I could carry a keg on my back using a rope. Okay. You have one keg, 100 silver. Okay. How? And the gold to silver ratio is 100, I think. Yes. So I'll put one gold coin down. And I'll fill up my keg. <laughs> that should last me uh, two weeks, I think. Yeah. Easily. All right. Cheers, William. He nods. He's like, remember, you can't sell that water. I won't. Who'd anger the spirits? <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, uh, excellent. Out into the desert you go. Uh, so the party begins to travel. Uh, the orcs are marching. Uh, they have a wagon that's carrying stuff. They also have an ox. Uh, the troops begin to march out into the endless desert. Mm -hmm. uh, are you helping them guide the way, or are you just going to let them do their thing? Can I make an insight check to see if they are good at navigating? Sure. Because it's possible that they don't know how to map. Uh, it is clear that these orcs, uh, despite being semi-capable, are not as proficient as you are. I will offer Armok my services as a navigator. He nods to you and he says, lead the way. Uh, well, he hands you a thing. map, right? Hands you a map. You're pretty confident. Uh, well, roll me a survival as you head towards the southwest. Oh, survival, I'm reasonably good at. <laughs> yes! Yes! Position yourself. We're going to have an encounter. Oh uh, go ahead and move your token so move this token here so southwest you said southwest so i just want to go south like this or do i want to go like here uh there you go right there uh excellent now let me gather up the troops Let's see what we're... how far ahead are you of this convoy 
Um, well, I feel like Shrew does like scouting and stuff, so maybe he is far ahead, and that's why he's got such a low roll. How far ahead? Uh, I'd say about like a hundred feet, perhaps, it's like within eyesight, but also uh, away enough to sort of see over like the next hill. That's too much. Or dude. Uh, I I don't know. How much do you think he would be far away? Uh, I'd say about anywhere between 30 to 60 feet ahead. Okay, 60 feet seems right. Reasonable. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's head over to the desert. Roll me a die. Six. Oh, that's not it. And a wyvern attacks the convoy. Depends on what you roll. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, that's not so bad. Uh, go ahead and position yourself as you are traveling. Okay. That is actually not too bad. This is, uh, high is good, right? I mean, it depends on what you're what's remaining. Uh, so you're 60 feet ahead of the convoy, right? And you come across to what appears to be a camp of some sort. And in this camp, you see this uh, boar elf who's currently just sitting there. Who's like, uh, there's a campfire, right? Well, it's not a fire, but it's like a small pit, uh, right? And it's currently sitting there meditating. What, if anything, do you do? Oh, there, traveler. It, like, opens up its eyes and sees you, right? As you're, like, coming upon it. It, like, stands up and begins running. Okay, that's odd. Six. So its action was to stand up and it starts running. What do you do? Uh, can I check the sort of camp if it's like he's left all his stuff behind? Uh, sure. So investigation. Uh, so, so I mean, are you moving towards the camp? Or are you letting the Borg elf go? That's my my question. Sure, I mean, I'm not going to shoot someone for running away. Uh, the boar elf, boar elf is running off into the distance. Uh, you, you approach the camp, and go ahead and roll me an investigation as you're making an assessment of this area. My investigation isn't very good. I am only a doctor. I mean, that's pretty damn good, if you know what I mean. So you're pretty sure that this boar elf, right, uh, was, uh, is that a fan? That's my, uh, computer overheating. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, so you're pretty sure, right, you're pretty confident that this boar elf was on a spirit journey of some sort, and you stumbled upon him while he was meditating, right? Oh, so you see, three. like, in scribblings in the sand, right? Um... Uh, uh, what they call this in Australia are walkabouts. So they're like hermits. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I get you. Uh, does he have anything valuable? Uh, roll me a perception. Okay. Uh, perception. Like checking the sands and stuff. Excellent. Uh, in the sand, as you're like sifting through, uh, you go through it and you find a uh, bag. That says like he's buried it so people didn't find it if he ran away. Good. <laughs> Roll me a knowledge arcana as you attempt to identify this. Okay, this could, this could go wrong. Uh, no, you are not quite certain what this bag does. Can I open it and look through the contents? Uh, you may, yes. Then I will do this. Uh, what are you thinking about pulling out? Gold. Uh, you pull out no gold. So it's empty? No. It's clearly not empty. Okay, so what, what else would a traveler have? What are you thinking about? Said like a spoon. Uh, no, there is no spoon in there. 
so I can definitely feel something. Can I feel the vague shape? As you're like, it seems like just keep going and endless things. As you're reaching in there and you're thinking about stuff that you're trying to pull out, nothing happens. What what is this like a a bowl? Can I look like put my head in it? Uh, you may. You stick your head in it, and it seems to be a portal to some other realm. Ooh. So wait, what does that look like? Uh, so tell me, uh, what does a pocket dimension look like? Oh my gosh. I think I know what this is. Uh, blame it. Is there stuff in it? Because I sort of just oh, imagine no, no. like it. So like to be trail. clear, how this thing works, you're not quite sure what it is, right? Your mm -hmm. character doesn't know quite sh quite sure what it is. So he's just like sticking his head in this bag. So we get this funny picture of like the orcs and Aramont coming on. And you've got a bag over your head. And they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just a... It's a... Oh, by the way, you don't hear them. Okay, so I'll take off the bag... <laughs> See the, the orcs of this like You oh. are surrounded by orcs and a uh, an Amak who are staring at you like what is this guy doing <laughs> with this bag over his head? So we get this comedy moment, right? Where it's just like this and then like you you take it off. You're completely surrounded by like orcs and Amaks like just staring at you. Jesus, why why did you guys sneak up on me then? Like that? They were literally uh twelve seconds behind you. <laughs> uh Sorry, I think I might have... Maybe 24 seconds. I forgot that they were moving at half speed. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, yes. They're like, what, what did you find? True. It's just an empty bag. <laughs> they're like, well... They're like looking at the ground and like trying to investigate what they see. They said, did you see anything? Yeah, there was a... Like a... Hulk... Elf person? Boar elf? Oh, you're talking about the boar elves, yes. It was like a wanderer. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact word, but I think like walkabout is like a word that used to describe them. Like hermits. Yeah. Spiritual yes, guards. You speak of the, uh, yes, the boar elves. Shamans sent young boar, uh, boar elves out and about to uh, do their spirit journey. Hmm. Huh. Seems like a nice guy. I guess we were disturbing him. Oh, uh, he shrugs. He's like, I don't know anything about Boar else. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I wasn't accusing you. Uh, shall we head on? Or do you think we should look around? Uh, so the Boar Elf was heading north. You guys are currently heading southwest. Uh, do you do anything? Uh, you don't forget they're following you, right? You're their leader. They're currently following you. And you I had think, this encounter. I think we're good to keep going unless you have any specific grievances against boar elves for whatever reason. Uh, so like, uh, Wazik takes out his crossbow and like takes bead on the running boar elf, right? Uh, he's like booking it, right? And uh, Amok just like puts a hand on him and like shakes his head no and says something in Orcish. You can roll an insight here. Okay, that's what's going on here. like saying something in another language. So you're not quite sure, but you know, you're pretty sure that had Amok not intervened, uh, Wasop would have uh, shot the boar elf. Interesting. Okay, so we keep going. Uh, is that? Do you stop? Do you say like, "Hey, we keep going"? Well, I mean, currently, Wasup and the uh, Gith are talking, right, in a strange language. I mean, do you want to investigate the camp, or do you think we're good? Uh, so Amak says, like, we're here to uh, investigate uh, the ruins, the the, the tomb. I'm not here okay. to start a fight. Let's keep going. Let's keep going then. Excellent. <laughs> I will 
uh, continue navigating. Roll me another survival as it becomes night. In the I same will area. survive. Are we going to get exhausted again? I mean, are you force marching? Uh, no, I don't want to force march. I don't want to get uh, exhausted. Okay. Uh, that night passes uneventfully as everybody remains on guard. Uh, the day approaches. Where to next, navigator? To the let's, southwest. Let's go southwest. That's kind of southwest, I think. It is. Perhaps if I'm on the right side. Nope. Let's move you off All to right. the side. Let me grab this. Let me grab it. Let me. There it goes. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> oh man, okay. this this map looks pretty good. Uh, thank you. Uh, go ahead and roll me survival for that night. Is this another survival? Yes, it'd be for a night. Midnight survival. Okay. I think. Are you back? I think oh, I might have dropped. No. Uh, so you just rolled an eight. I did, yes. Oh, no. I have good news and I have bad news. Eight is the bad number. So you got to your destination. However, that is when a sandstorm hits. And uh, that's where we'll pick up in the next episode. <laughs> I see. I like this. This is good you. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I will see you folks in the next episode. Uh, are you coming back on? Um, Who knows? I think I've got one more session in me. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, I, I wish I could see you, but I just see a black screen. Oh, and I think my this my roll twenty dropped. So I'm just going to wave goodbye to the audience oh, and okay. tell roll twenty to get on it, get on it. <laughs> Thank you very much for the running this game. It's very cool.